This is a tale of the man who heard a word in the night in the land of the heathery hills in the days of the feud and the fight by the sides of the rainy sea where never a stranger came on the awful lips of the dead he heard the outlandish name it sang in his sleeping ears it hummed in his waking head the name ticonderoga the utterance of the dead on the loch sides of appen where the mist blew from the sea a steward stood with a cameron an angry man was he the blood beat in his ears the blood ran hot to his head the mist blew from the sea and there was a cameron dead oh what have i done to my friend oh what have i done to myself that he should be cold and dead and i in the danger of all nothing but danger about me danger behind and before death at weight in the heather in appen and memore hate at all the fairies and death at each of the fords cameron's priming gunlocks and cameron's sharpening swords but this was a man of counsel this was a man of a score there dwelt no pawkier stuart in appen or memore he looked on the blowing mist he looked on the awful dead and there came a smile on his face and there slipped a thought in his head out over cairn and moss out over scrog and scar he ran as runs the clansman that bears the cross of war his heart beat in his body his hair clove to his face when he came at last in the gloaming to the dead man's brother's place the east was white with the moon and the west with the sun was red and there in the house doorway stood the brother of the dead i have slain a man to my danger i have slain a man to my death i put my soul in your hands the panting steward saith i lay it bare in your hands for i know your hands are leal and be you my targe and bullock from the bullet and the steel then up and spoke the cameron and gave him his hand again there shall never man in scotland set faith in me in vain and whatever man you have slaughtered of whatever name or line by my sword and yonder mountain i make your quarrel mine i bid you into my fireside i share with you house and hall it stands upon my honor to see you safe from all it fell in the time of midnight when the fox barked in the den and the plaids were over the faces in all the houses of men that as living cameron lay sleepless on his bed out of the night and the other world came into him the dead my blood is on the heather my bones are on the hill there is joy in the home of ravens that the young shall eat their fill my blood is poured in the dust my soul is spilled in the air and the man that has undone me sleeps in my brother's care i'm way for your death my brother but if all my house were dead i could ne'er withdraw the plighted hand nor break the word once said oh what shall i say to our father in the place to which i fare oh what shall i say to our mother who greets to see me there and to all the kindly camerons that have lived and died long syne is this the word you send them false hearted brother mine it's neither fear nor duty it's neither quick nor dead shall gar me withdraw the plighted hand or break the word once said thrice in the time of midnight 
when the fox barked in the den, and the plagues were over the faces in all the houses of men. Thrice as the living Cameron lay sleepless on his bed, out of the night and the other world came into him the dead, and cried to him for vengeance on the man that laid him low, and thrice the living Cameron told the dead Cameron, no. Thrice you have seen me, brother, but now shall see me no more, till you meet your angry fathers upon the farther shore. Thrice I have spoken, and now before the cock be heard, I take my leave forever with the naming of a word. It shall sing in your sleeping ears, it shall hum in your waking head, the name Ticonderoga and the warning of the dead. Now when the night was over and the time of people's fears, the Cameron walked abroad and the word was in his ears. Many a name I know, but never a name like this. Oh, where shall I find a skilly man shall tell me what it is? With many a man he counseled of high and low degree, with the herdsmen of the mountains and the fishers of the sea. And he came and went unweary and read the books of yore and the runes that were written of old on stones upon the moor. And many a name he was told, but never the name of his fears. Never in east or west the name that rang in his ears. Names of men and of clans, names for the grass and the tree, for the smallest tarn in the mountains, the smallest reef in the sea. Names for the high and low, names of the crag and the flat. But in all the land of Scotland, never a name like that. And now there was speech in the south, and a man of the south that was wise, a periwigged lord of London called on the clans to rise. And the riders rode, and the summons came to the western shore, to the land of the sea and the heather, to Appen and Mamor. It called on all to gather from every scrog and scor that loved their father's tartan and the ancient game of war. And down the watery valley and up the windy hill, once more as in the olden, the pipes were sounding shrill. Again in highland sunshine, the naked steel was bright, and the lads once more in tartan went forth again to fight. Oh, why should I dwell here with a weird upon my life, when the clansmen shout for battle and the war swords clash in strife. I can a joy at feast, I can a sleep in bed for the wonder of the word and the warning of the dead. It sings in my sleeping ears, it hums in my waking head, the name Ticonderoga, the utterance of the dead. Then up and with the fighting men to march away from here, till the cry of the great war pipe shall drown it in my ear. Where flew King George's ensign, the plated soldiers went. They drew their swords in Germany, in Flanders pitched the tent. The bells of foreign cities rang far across the plain. They passed the happy Rhine, they drank the rapid main. Through Asiatic jungles, the tartans filed their way, and the neighing of the war pipes struck terror in Cathay. Many a name have I heard, he thought, in all the tongues of men, full many a name both here and there, full many both now and then. When I was at home at my father's house, in the land of the naked knee, between the eagles that fly in the lift, and the herrings that swim in the sea. And now that I am a captain man, with a bra cockade in my hat, many a name 
have I heard, he thought. But never a name like that. There fell a war in a woody place, lay far across the sea, a war of the march in the murk midnight, and the shot from behind the tree. The shaven head and the painted face, the silent foot in the wood, in a land of a strange outlandish tongue that was hard to be understood. It fell about the gloaming, The general stood with his staff. He stood and looked east and west, with little mind to laugh. Far have I been, and much have I seen, and kent both gain and loss. But here we have woods on every hand, and a kettle water to cross. Far have I been, and much have I seen, but never the beat of this. And there's one must go down to that water side to see how deep it is. It fell in the dusk of the night, when unco things betide. The skilly captain, the Cameron, went down to that waterside. Canny and soft the captain went, and a man of the woody land, with the shaven head and the painted face, went down at his right hand. It fell in the quiet night, there was never a sound to ken. But all of the woods to the right and the left lay filled with painted men. Far have I been, and much have I seen, both as a man and a boy, but never have I set forth a foot on so perilous an employ. It fell in the dusk of the night, when unco things betide, that he was aware of a captain man, drew near to the waterside. He was aware of his coming, down in the gloaming alone, and he looked in the face of the man, and lo, the face was his own. This is my weird, he said, and now I ken the worst, for many shall fall this morn, but I shall fall with the first. And you of the outland tongue, you of the painted face, This is the place of my death. Can you tell me the name of the place? Since the Frenchmen have been here, they have called it Sumerie. But that is a name for priests and not for you and me. It went by another word, quoth he of the shaven head. It was called Ticonderoga in the days of the great dead. And it fell on the morrow's morning, in the fiercest of the fight, that the Cameron bit the dust, as he foretold at night. And far from the hills of heather, far from the isles of the sea, he sleeps in the place of the name, as it was doomed to be. Hello, I'm Dr. Matthew Cagle, curator here at Fort Ticonderoga. I hope you've enjoyed this reading of Robert Louis Stevenson's Ticonderoga, A Legend of the West Highlands, one of the most enduring ghost stories in Ticonderoga's history since it was published in Scribner's Magazine by Stevenson in 1887. However, his poem owes its origin to a much older oral tradition in Scotland, uh, going back probably to the late 18th century. Stevenson's poem, however, has had a long life being reprinted not only in English but in many other languages, and in fact, the Ticonderoga Library even has an edition printed in Russian. Well into the 20th century, the enduring power of this story has been proven when it was republished in the 1960s in a companion volume as prose to Rod Serling's famous Twilight Zone series. Now, I'm standing here on the Carrion battlefield, and behind me is the monument to the Black Watch and to the Scots soldiers that fought and died here in the Seven Years' War in what was the bloodiest battle fought on this continent until the American Civil War, which is, of course, at the heart of Stevenson's poem. Now, Stevenson's poem does have some pieces that need unpacking. 
because you may have noticed that the protagonist of the story is described as a Cameron. This evidently was the cause of some dispute even when the poem was written in the 19th century, uh, various families claiming uh, the protagonist of the tale. And it's very clear that it is meant to be not a Captain Cameron, but Major Duncan Campbell, uh, who's the third in command of the 42nd or the Highland Regiment that served in North America during the Seven Years' War. And, like the story goes, Major Campbell was mortally wounded in the action here uh, at Carillon on July 8th of 1758, where the 42nd Regiment suffered amongst the highest casualties of any of the British units engaged, over half their strength being killed or wounded in that action. Now, Part of the transposition of names in this case is probably due to the fact that this story was an oral tradition and was passed down through generations. And so some of the historical details have become a bit murky. For instance, the reference to Highlanders serving all the way in China prior to the Seven Years' War, something we have no evidence of, certainly in the British Army. Nevertheless, the story endures as an eerie, evocative tale about a word and a place that come together when one least expects it. And for that reason, we felt that this was a fitting way for us to acknowledge Halloween, when of course all of us are finding the spooky and the creepy in the world around us. And it's not hard for us to find the eerie and the creepy here at Ticonderoga, especially at a place like the Carillon Battlefield, where the past is very palpable on the ground. And so with that, we here at Ticonderoga wish you a very happy Halloween. Keep warm, keep safe. Thank you for joining us.